If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Heavy-handed opening shot of skulls in cemetery to tell you Harry Potter ain't for kids anymore. No, that revelation was made back in Prisoner of Azkaban when Sirius Black was stated to have wanted to kill the main protagonist. How many kids movies outright state the antagonist wants to kill the protagonist? I mean, if Dora was actually realistic, Swiper would have pulled the blicky on her by now, but he hasn't because that is something that's actually for kids. This old man noticed the light before it was turned on. Or this is the movie showing you why he performed the double take. In other words, Jeremy fails to recognize things that are happening at the same time. Harry! Oh hey, the Hogwarts assholes finally stopped sending Harry back to spend every summer with abusive relatives. When did you get here? Just now, you. Last night. Oh wait, no they didn't. Assholes. Again, Harry is sent to the Dursleys because of his blood relation to Petunia. You calling Dumbledore an asshole for literally saving Harry's life is hilariously tone deaf. It's also strange because this movie literally does not show the Dursleys, so you're only bringing this up because you have knowledge of the books that you say don't matter. This two second clip of Robert Pattinson falling out of a tree was the only audition he needed for Twilight. Is the boot just sitting out here in a field the rest of the time when it's not being used as a port key? Did someone come out here even earlier this morning and set it in place? I'm not even going to answer these silly questions. I'd much rather point out that this is what I'm talking about. CinemaSins asks questions that aren't related to the film's plot in any way, and people act like because I relay an answer that may be in the source material that I'm wrong to do so. You know, because books don't matter, but apparently random ADHD questions that have nothing to do with what the movie is saying do. You might as well ask why does Harry wear glasses or why is Ron's hair red? Neither have anything to do with the plot of this film and don't deserve nor require an answer. Why are they all standing around that manky old boot? That isn't just any manky old boot, mate. It's a port key. Of course it is. You can now officially transport using anything in the Harry Potter universe. The various methods of travel in the wizarding world all serve a specific purpose. Brooms allow a single flyer to fly wherever they want, but are generally slow and the flyer can't carry much with them. The flu network allows travel using fireplaces, which is also the con of using it. And port keys allow a traveler to teleport to a specific location and only to and from that location. This is no different from the various methods of travel we have in the real world, where they each have pros and cons. Why fly to Vegas when you can drive? Think about your answer to that question. That looks like one broken bone, several sprains, and a handful of future chiropractic patients. Suggesting anyone should become a chiropractic patient. Harry Potter adults would much rather see the kids hurt themselves than teaching them anything useful, as always. This is how you teach people physical things, though. Learn by experiencing it. You think they teach boxers how to box without hitting them? Besides, no one in the group was actually hurt. You're just making things up. Hurt me toe. But who put the tent up? Another irrelevant question made worse by this being a universe where magic exists. I mean, this man was actually miffed that the dishes were washing themselves in the last movie, but is asking who put the tent up. Unbelievably convenient spell makes one wonder why there are such things as conflicts in the magic world. Besides the fact that those two things literally have no correlation, I am enjoying how you see something like this and still leave in the sin about someone putting the tent up in the first place. It's like, on one hand, this guy realizes they have wondrous supernatural abilities, and then on the other, assumes they are doing manual labor. Blimey, Dad. How far up are we? I'm still trying to figure out why stairs exist at the magical Quidditch arena. What, no magical spell or elevator? Have you never been to a sporting event live? Who am I kidding? Of course you haven't. In a stadium, such as a soccer or baseball stadium, there are elevators, but they cannot take you to every single row where there are seats. That's where the stairs come in. Malfoy somehow reaches from all the way down here with his cane to catch some of Harry's supposedly loose-fitting jacket and stop him in his tracks. A blatant lie. Malfoy reaches up to dig his cane in Potter's foot, not his jacket. You know, because that doesn't make any sense at all. That's racist. Bet you wouldn't say that to an Irishman's face, though. Damn, all that build up for the Quidditch Cup and we don't see one bit of it. It's almost like the title of this movie is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and not Harry Potter watches the Quidditch Cup. Get back to the port key, everybody, and stick together! What port key? The boot was the port key and then they landed in a field. 
So, are they supposed to run back to the field or all the way back to the random English hill that contains the boot? Here Jeremy is once again pretending he hasn't seen this movie already and making it seem as if the port key doesn't come with the travelers when they teleport. This movie specifically shows how port keys work in the climax when the Triwizard Cup goes with Harry and Cedric to the graveyard and returns when they do. Even if you dumbass CinemaSense fanboys pretend he's doing it from the perspective of someone that hasn't seen this movie, the Triwizard Cup literally invalidates this specific sin, but it's still in the video. Also, hundreds of thousands of magical people and instead of ganging up on a handful of Death Eaters and overpowering them, they all scatter. Haven't these people seen A Bug's Life? The vast majority of people aren't about that life. People talk a big game behind their computer screens, but when them green spells start flying, you begin to separate the wheat from the bitches. I mean, these people are too scared to say Voldemort's name. You think they're down to actually fight his followers? Main character gets separated from the group because of an unrealistic scuffle in a large crowd cliche. I take it 2014 Jeremy has not heard about the Astral World tragedy here in 2021. Let's just say that's not unrealistic. Not by a long shot. So everyone's dead? Or did everyone escape and then they burned everything to the ground? You see, the problem with these cutaway to after the action is over shots is that they confuse the f out of the audience. Jeremy sees an empty festival where the campground has been burned down and assumes the audience is confused at what happened here. No, bud, I think that's just you. What crime? It's the dark mark, Harry. It's his mark. Oh, the burning down of a whole village is not the crime they're talking about. It's the scary firework. It's almost like they have rules against certain things in this specific society. I mean, you honestly think wizards care about this being burned down? I would assume summoning wanted criminals to attack other wizards would be higher on the priority list. Wait, they're going straight to Hogwarts after all this sh The passage of time continues to confound CinemaSins. Honestly, why even travel by water at all if you're going to go by magical, completely submerged boat? Why don't these two other schools just have all the students take a port key to Hogwarts? It wouldn't make for nearly as cinematic an entrance, but it definitely makes for a more logical story. The first part of your question is extremely weird, considering it insinuates submarines shouldn't exist. No, seriously, think about what was said. Why travel by water if you're going to be submerged? And the second is that port keys have to be arranged and everyone has to touch the object, meaning they'd have to take turns, which risks being discovered by Nomad due to how long that would take. Then there is port key sickness, which nobody likes, and it's just more of a headache than it's worth. Hogwarts has been chosen to host a legendary event, the Tri-Wizard Tournament. Apparently the announcement of this very special event just happened today with the competing schools knowing way in advance before any of the students at Hogwarts did. I don't understand this criticism. When would have been appropriate to tell the students, and why is right now a bad time to do it? Dumbledore makes big announcements like these in the Great Hall every year. Why is this a problem now? To be fair, this is how we imagine all French girls, whether they know magic or not. Oh, was that it? I thought you were pointing out things wrong with Goblet of Fire, not telling us you think French women are accompanied by butterflies. And now our friends in the North. The North? Isn't Victor Crumb from Bulgaria? Isn't Hogwarts in England? Or does Crumb play professionally for a Bulgarian Quidditch team and go to school in some Scandinavian country? First of all, Hogwarts is in Scotland. I know Americans don't do the knowing anything about other countries, but Scotland is a different country than England. This is important because Harry, Ron, and Hermione are all English, while Seamus is Irish. Are you noticing the problem with your question yet? Just because a student is from one country doesn't mean they can't go to school in another country, and this is what happened with Victor Crumb. He is from Bulgaria, but Durmstrang is in Scandinavia, meaning it is more north than Scotland. Wait, the best seeker in the entire magical world is a high school student? You said that like it's unbelievable or something. Venus and Serena made their pro debuts when they were children and became the best in the world not long after that. Heck, Harry Potter himself defeated the most powerful dark wizard of all time at 17. Age is only a number. Except for when it comes to matters of consent. To explain all this, we have the head of the Department of International Magical Cooperation, Mr. Bartimus Crouch. Who isn't the least bit busy after that terrorist attack that happened yesterday. Time is still terrorizing the CinemaSins office. Jeremy really thinks that because he just saw the attack, that it happened yesterday in the film. This is the level of comprehension I'm dealing with. Three years from now, when we're old enough to be chosen. Wait, they're doing another Triwizard Tournament in three years? then why wasn't there one during the first movie? There are a couple things wrong with this. First, Ron is making a reference to their age, not when the next tournament will be held. They're 14 and only 17 year olds have been allowed to put their name into the cup. Second, this is the first tournament in hundreds of years as the tournament was revived after being shut down due to safety concerns. And lastly, even if the second thing I said wasn't true, a previous tournament could have been held at a different location. 
Dumbledore specifically stated that Hogwarts had been selected to host the tourney this year. Again, I ask, why are the wands, which bond themselves to their owners and seem so f***ing important in the first movie, sometimes just not remotely necessary? Again, wands are there to focus a wizard's magic and make it more potent. Think about what you're asking for just a moment. If the wands were what allowed someone to do magic, wouldn't that mean muggles could simply pick up a wand and start levitating shit? Beyond that, you literally saw Harry perform magic in the first and third films without a wand, so why are you asking this as if you don't know wandless magic is and has been a thing? All right, you put your name in the couple of the fire. Oh, you asked one of the oldest students to do it for you? No. You mean that could have worked if he did? Potentially. I mean, that's literally what happened when Barty Crouch Jr. put Harry's name in the cup. Dumbledore knows that's technically possible, which is why he's calmly asking Harry this question. The Goblet of Fire constitutes a binding magical contract. What happens if you break the magical contracts? Who enforces them? Who enforces the magical contracts? The magic, genius. If you don't participate, you die. Presumably, of course. But from what we know about the Unbreakable Vow, it's the correct presumption. If we are to truly discover the meaning of these events, perhaps we should let them unfold. I agree with Severus. Wait, you mean you can do something to keep him from playing? No, the point of this scene is to stop fretting over why Harry has been entered. Snape is not saying they have a solution, he's saying let's stop looking for one. Ah, the bird bite. Harry immediately drinks his own blood after possibly Rabbit Owl bites his hand. Well, if he got bit by a Rabbit Owl, he's got bigger problems because Rabbit Owls don't exist. Rabies can only survive in and be transmitted by mammals. Why is this the one and only time in all eight movies when two people who need to talk to each other while in separate places use this fireplace phone? One and only time in all eight movies, huh? I guess you just forgot about Harry and Sirius using this same fireplace to talk in The Order of the Phoenix. Oh good, more movie tricks to avoid showing the audience sh that, while expensive to film, would actually be more entertaining than watching Harry listening to it. Because this movie is called Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. The point is to show Harry's perspective of these events and is why we follow him during his attempts at these tasks. You are literally asking for four scenes of the same thing in an already two hour and 30 minute movie. This dragon chase scene is awesome, but didn't you say they'd been given a golden egg to protect? Not they've been told to kill you? Is the dragon intelligent enough to know that none of the other hundreds of people back at the stadium are gonna steal its egg? I know we're dealing with a magical creature and all, but has this man seriously never animaled before? Most creatures I've come across have one-track minds where they will singularly focus on something, like how a cat forgets literally everything when there's a laser on the ground. Harry is antagonizing the Horntail, and now its only goal is to roast and eat him. Like these videos. Was this part of Voldemort's plan? Everything would have been fucked if Harry had slipped and died here, as any non-main character person would have. Then it's a good thing that didn't happen, meaning it's not a sin of this movie. You know, because it didn't happen. The Yule Ball has been a tradition of the Triwizard Tournament since its inception. Now it just sounds like you're making shit up as it goes along. That's kind of what happens in a fictional universe, Jeremy. I know you're mentally five years old and think everything you see on the pretty screen is actually happening, but Harry Potter doesn't exist. He is a figment of the imagination of a woman named Joanne. She made all of this up. Also, Yule Ball festivities will now take up 15 minutes of this movie's time just so we can see Ron and Hermione get pissed off at each other. Which is extremely important in the development of each character, considering they eventually get married and have children. Inside every girl, a secret swan slumbers, longing to burst forth and take flight. From now on, I'm calling my penis Secret Swan. Jeremy says boner. Amusing scene, but why does a school stop classes to teach students how to dance? Because there is a ball, and they're representing Gryffindor. I thought Minerva explained that quite well. Two hour and 37 minute movie spends way too much time on the giant love story. Says the guy that was asking for the film to show us Victor, Cedric, and Fleur's attempts with their dragons. Wait a minute, no one's asked this girl out yet? First off, that's racist. Second off, she has so few options that she says yes to the first Weasley that comes along? Wait, it's racist that she hadn't been asked already? Most of the girls hadn't been asked by this point, and that's because the guys are all chicken shit. They literally show you that in the movie. And what's wrong with one of the Weasleys? They're generally very popular in school and tall, which, as Tinder tells us, is the only thing women want. You're only saying this because they're poor, and that's classist. That's actually abuse. Oh no, a teacher tapped the head of disobedient students with a notebook. Better call child services. We need to transform them into Gen Z. Also, Hermione isn't old enough to be hot yet. Won't be too much longer, though. Jeremy is that one dude that hangs around high schools. You know the one I'm talking about. You know, your uncle. That's right, you guys. I got the 14-year-old. 
I'm nailing her in the room of requirement later. <laughs> At least they're both underage. You're 40 and you're calling a 15 year old hot. It's amazing you're trying to call out two kids when you're only mad that it's socially unacceptable for it to be you. She can't join us. Would not care to join you and Victor. Jeez, Ron's character motivations are so base he might as well just be a penis. Jeremy says penis. I think he's got a bit more than friendship on his mind. Yeah, he's not the only one. You can edit that part out, right? Continuing to joke about his attraction to a child. Listen, Drew Barrymore is hot, but I'm not about to call her that when watching E.T. This woman's height changes in every scene she's in. Along with time, heels also confuse cinema sense. Actually, we don't really talk at all. Victor's more of a physical being. Haha, uh -huh. gross. Jeremy is actually mad that it's not him. When's the last time you held your breath underwater for an hour, Hermione? When's the last time Hermione had no clue what spell to cast to get Harry out of this problem? Uh, this one, which is why you refer to it as this problem and not a problem. We've agreed. Reward him. Second place. Yeah. For outstanding moral fiber. Harry gets extra points for cheating. Cheating? So him going out of his way to help his opponent, causing him to lose first place, is cheating? Fam, you need a new dictionary. The one you have is labeled antonyms. Diggory's dad is here? Where's Fleur's dad? Or Crumb's? Oh, all right, Diggory's gonna die here in a bit, and we need that money shot of his dad wailing over his body. Or, the elder Diggory is British, and it's a far shorter trip to Scotland than from France or where Crumb is from. Together! One, two, three! Sportsmanship. This is one of those sins where CinemaSins doesn't know how to segue into the next scene. In other words, a big fat nothing. Support key. Why did the cup travel with them on this journey, but the boot didn't travel with them in the initial port key voyage earlier in the film? But it clearly did. What the hell did you think Arthur meant when he said, Get back to the port key, everybody, and stick together! Should I divulge how I truly lost my powers? Anything that'll give Harry enough time to get out of this, we're all ears. And you're saying this as if that happened, which it didn't. Harry was literally let out of this predicament by Voldemort because of old Boldy's ego. He wanted to actually duel Harry, and that's what let him get away. When dear sweet Lily Potter gave her life for her only son, she provided the ultimate protection. A bit of magic that saves people from the killing curse? Why doesn't everybody learn this? Was Lily the only one who knew how to do it? The f***? It's almost like it's a complex bit of magic that requires the user to die to protect someone they love. If you take a moment to simply think about the parameters of this, you'd find it's extremely unlikely for these circumstances to ever come up. The killing curse is illegal, and wizards aren't generally trying to kill each other. Then you need to be selfless enough to die for protection to be passed to someone else who you can't even be sure was fully protected because you died. Then they have to live with a blood relative on top of that. Oh, hey, Harry and Voldemort have their wand streams crossed. You know what you should do? Take another four movies to get us back to this exact same situation. I guess you're just ignoring the fact that Harry cannot kill Voldemort until he destroys all the Horcruxes and the one inside himself. But yeah, sure, this exact same situation. Also, whenever my brother and I cross streams, we definitely got some on the floor. Crossing streams with your brother. I mean, that's not only nasty, but how did you work out the timing? Oh, you, you meant pee. Still gross, though. Harry is saved by some bullshit ghosts because of some bullshit having to do with his wand and Voldemort's wand connecting or some bullshit. Why is it bullshit, though? I mean, this is how the magic works, so what other explanation were you expecting for this? It's a book about magic, dude. Literally anything can happen. Why does the port key return them to the grandstands instead of the spot back in the maze that they left from? Because that's what the cup was originally supposed to do. Crouch only bewitched it to go to the graveyard because he never expected Harry to return. Imagine how he will reward me. Once for all, silenced Harry Potter. At first I thought you weren't killing him because of that only Voldemort gets to kill Harry Potter nonsense, but no, you could have killed him like 20 times since you took him here. This is one of those disingenuous sins that CinemaSins thrives on. Ambiguity. At first glance, it seems like CinemaSins is saying Barty could have killed Harry on the way to this room, but when you point out he was trying to remove Harry from the 30 plus wizards that could have stopped him, he then has the ability to say he meant all the time during the tournament. Of course, that's nullified too, because Voldemort needed Harry to survive to resurrect. Any way you look at this, it's wrong. You mean to tell me the entire tournament from the beginning of the school year until now was rigged just to get Harry to touch a port key? Couldn't they have just made a port key out of his breakfast waffles or something? This particular sin lends credence to the latter part of my previous sin, that CinemaSins meant Barty should have killed Harry before all of this. There's really no other reason for them to say this right now after the previous insinuation. Like, did they only now think of this question? As in, not when they show the cup was a port key? Priori and cantatum, 
You saw your parents that night, didn't you? Yeah, and it was total bullshit. Jeremy yells at the screen cliche. Who the fuck are these people waving at? And don't give me that they're waving at the French people on the horses nonsense because there's no freaking way anyone can see them this far inside the castle. <laughs> what a silly sin. What about all the people that wave to boats as they set sail? The meaning is symbolic to the waver. It's like how you yell at the movies as if they can hear you and like how I yell at you like you can hear me.